if anyone would have told me six years ago that I would stand in front of most everyone in Israel in the most important ceremony that we have here and light up a torch, I would laugh at him. Me? The one that her friend crossed the street trying to avoid her? The one that was crying out every night fearing that her kids would be taken away from her? Or that tomorrow she would be fired? I was 28 years old, a mother of three kids, and an abandoned woman which her husband had left. For me, standing there, it was in a split I was changed my status. For being a well-known, well-appreciated member of my society, I've become the invisible woman, the one that you don't speak with but speak about, the one that destroys families. I wasn't even the sinner woman, I was the sin itself. And the worst part of it was that I didn't know my place. I didn't realize that my social status changed. And when I understood it, I started to fight back. So my name is Fanny Sukenik. I'm 35 years old. I'm a social activist and I'm a feminist and I'm ultra-orthodox Haredi woman. <laughs> Once, once, I was just Fanny, a talented young girl who lived in Haifa. I was born to a Haredi family, to a parents that let us think a lot, talk a lot, and learn as much as we can. I was born and raised to be one of the Eshet Chayel, you know, the Jewish housewife and household that's supposed to be good, to be a good mother, to be a good wife. But I guess the signs were already there, if you want to see them. They were there when I was 18 years old, 19 years old, and I still refused to be shidduched, like getting married. I said that I want to be a professional trained. I said that I want to earn my money to be independent. When I was 22, my parents were hysteric, like I was one of the leftovers, <laughs> because I was one of the old maids that never been married yet. Half a year later, I met a nice yeshiva guy, we got married. Six years later, we have a family with three beautiful children. And then he left, leaving me to enter this horrifying world of separate and divorced ultra-Orthodox women. I remember one rainy day. I was walking in the street with my three kids. One of them was in a stroll, each of two of the others in each side. Three umbrellas, three bags, everything is on me, and someone was crying. I wasn't sure who is crying. I wasn't sure was it is the sky, my kids, maybe me. So I looked up in the sky and asked, why? Why is this nightmare happening to me? Well, this is not what I planned for myself. Like, why do people avoid me and they prefer not seeing me instead of helping me? Why do I worth less than anyone else in my community? At this point, I didn't find the answers. If it wasn't my family, I don't know how would I, how would I survive and how would I stand here nowadays, because those days, my family was my shelter. Some days, I wish that I would have been a widow, because if I, would a widow, if I would have been a widow, they would hug me, they would help me, they would support me. So here I was, three years later, after getting my get, still divorced, still single mother for three kids, and still struggling and not accepting the verdict of being isolated and lonely just because I am not married. Looking for answers, I googled it. I just imagined me sitting at night with my laptop on my knees looking for a friend, looking for someone, another Haredi woman that will speak with me, that will show me that I am not alone, and I found one. She was another Haredi woman, and we spoke. We spoke about our thoughts, our emotion, our frustration, and then I realized that this is not my own story. This is not my own only feeling. Like, there are many women like me all around Israel, all around the world, that are suffering from this loneliness. And one Shabbat, when I have some friend of mine, like the single mother's club, and the weekends off, like we're sitting together, 
I said, listen, I want to change the way our society treats divorced women. So one of, me said, my, one of my friends said, are you crazy? Haven't you suffered enough? What do you want to do for yourself? And another one said, so, but this is not healthy to stick in the past. Look at the future. Go find yourself a nice husband. Go on. And the third one says, that's a great idea. I will be there and she is with me till nowadays. So in this Shabbat, on sunset, Ba'asher Telchi was born. Ba'asher Telchi comes from Megillat Ruth. When Ruth says to Naomi, wherever you go, I go with you. El Asher Telchi Elech. Ba'asher Telchi accept, express acceptness and non-judgmental attitude. It says that every woman that has faced this crisis of separation and divorce in the conservative societies should never walk alone, because we would be with her, because we would escort her, no one would be in the same lonely path that I walk those days. You know, we are not like a group of complaining and pity women that sits and complain and cry about the poor fate. We speak about right and respect. We speak about respect because we are human beings and deserve this respect. And we speak about rights that we deserve according to the law here in Israel and across the world and according to the halakha, the Jewish halakha, we have rights. And we are here to make everyone know that we know our rights and we know our respects and no one should forget it. <laughs> we are not a chesed group although it's very important, but this is not our main goal. Our main goal is to let everyone know that no woman should never walk alone in this way. Now, we deal with crazy stuff sometimes. We have one woman that diagnosed with schizophrenic and her kids were taken away from her. We have so many women that are not allowed to go to their children's wedding just because they get divorced. And we have so many women that suffered from violence, so many kinds of violence in and out their marriage life. For me, reaching out for those women, that's the way of Judaism. Like when you see someone that is in need, you don't stand aside, watch him and speak about him. You step in. You make the first step and you do whatever you can in order to help him wherever he is or she is. So... My personal story goes on like a modern feminist Cinderella story. I remarried to a terrific guy and moved to live in Jerusalem. Well, you think that being a feminist and Haredi is complicated? Try to be a feminist and Haredi and live in Jerusalem. That's complicated. <laughs> That's really complicated. Because Jerusalem is complicated, as the spoker before says. But for me, I don't afraid from its complexity. Because complexity is beautiful. I'm a feminist and I'm Haredi and I'm here to prove that it can be. And complex is beautiful as Jerusalem is beautiful. You can see its beauty only when you don't turn your back to her complexity. So, remember me? Walking in the rain, looking to the sky and asking why? Last year, when I stand on Herzl Mountain, I looked to the sky once again. But this time, I didn't ask any questions. Because the sky, the sky won't give you any answers. Your faith, your belief, will help you as they help me to find the possibilities and the answers into your hearts. Thank you so much.